Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about best practices on Zapier. This is a beginner level tutorial, so if you're new to Zapier and you're new to building automations, there's gonna be five simple steps in this automation video that can help you understand how to structure things, how to name things, and really get the most out of the automations that you build. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually create a flowchart. So especially for bigger and complicated uh, automations, having a flowchart that's color-coded with a simple diagram and some green things that you already implemented and some red things that might be hard uh, or maybe yellow things that are in progress will just really help you stay organized as you develop a 10 plus step automation. And this flowchart is also gonna be really useful for communicating what you've done to other members of the team. You probably have a primary role outside of automation right now. And as you develop these automations, you're gonna to need to be able to share what you've done with other members of your team. And maybe there'll even be someone in the no-code discipline joining your team very soon. Having a flowchart is going to make it much easier to communicate what this automation is for and what the outcomes are that you're trying to achieve. Next is naming. You're gonna to wanna to name the Zap as descriptive as possible. Zapier, especially, the search is a little wonky. It really only searches the name of the automation. So when you name it, be sure to name it something descript and something that you can easily find uh, when you're looking for it months later. And also know that there's not a, uh, an upper limit to the length of the name. It would be a lot better to write a sentence than just a word when you're naming these things. And inside of the automation itself, be sure to name each step. Granted, creating a, a channel message on Slack or a new email from search in Gmail might be an adequate name to begin with, but what is the actual search criteria inside of that find uh, new email matching search in Gmail, right? Are you looking for a subject line with a specific subject? Are you looking for a sender or uh, a BCC address, right? These are things that um, you would want to incorporate in the name so that you can scroll through and very quickly understand what is happening inside of that Zap without just having the name of the action or the trigger. You really want to understand what's in that setup step, what's in the variables inside of that step in the automation, and just name it as descriptively as possible. Our next tip is going to be duplicate the Zap. Currently, Zapier doesn't have version control. If you end up messing something up inside of the Zap that you're relying on, you're really gonna have a, a hard time putting it back to the way that it was. What we recommend is anytime you're gonna do construction, on an automation that is currently on and working, even if it has a couple of bugs, just duplicate it and then do the construction on the duplicate of the, the original Zap. And it'll just save you a whole bunch of heartache if you ever mess anything up. Number four is gonna be chat notifications. So if you use Slack or Microsoft Teams, this is a great way of keeping the entire team up to date with what the robots are doing. So we have a, a channel in our Slack called auto underscore updates. And all of our automations get posted to auto updates whenever they run. This is a really simple way of just keeping a pulse on what the robots are doing and what next steps are needed for any people inside your organizations that are dependent on the outputs of those automations. When you're setting up an automation on Zapier, head on over to xray.tools and add in all your tools there. It's gonna be a really fast, really easy way of seeing all of the triggers, actions, and searches that are possible on Zapier with the tools that you already use. Uh, it's discovery, really, and, and it can help you and other non-technical people inside your organization plan what it is you want to see as outcomes from the automation and what triggers you can base the automation off of inside of your existing workflow. So X-Ray Tools is gonna to be the fastest way for you to understand what's possible with the tools that you're already using. So I hope this video has been helpful. If there's anything else you'd like us to cover here on the show, don't be afraid to comment down below and stay tuned for a more advanced 
Zapier best practices tutorial, we'll cover things like round tripping and using an operational database to really support the infrastructure for your entire team. So that video is coming later this month. And as always, links and resources are in the description down below. Don't forget, keep the flow.